We're in Tamaki Makoto, Auckland for this video and it's going to be all about some epic Korean food. Tamaki Makoto, Auckland is one of the most diverse cities in the world. We can't wait to share some of the best Korean food this city has to offer. Tamaki Makoto, Auckland is home to over 200 ethnic communities, which means the food scene here is incredibly diverse. Over the next few weeks, we'll be exploring Auckland's food culture and showcasing the range in cuisine that can be experienced in Aotearoa, New Zealand's biggest city. In this video, we're hunting down some of the best spots to eat Korean food. We take you into the kitchen of a contemporary Korean restaurant, giving traditional flavours and dishes a kiwi twist. Eat delicious hot dog, a popular Korean street food from a family-run stall, and dive into a steaming pot of gamjatang, pork spine stew. We're hunting down Auckland's best Korean eats. Hit subscribe and get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena. And we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. This video is going to be all about incredible Korean food that you can find in Auckland. So Auckland has a thriving Korean community and the number of Korean restaurants has really grown over the past few years. So in this video we're going to be eating traditional Korean food, we're going to eat some contemporary Korean food and also some Korean street snacks. And we're heading to a contemporary Korean restaurant called Gochu. We've arrived at Gochu, our first restaurant, and we've grabbed a seat at the best spot in any restaurant to sit, I reckon, which is at the bar with a full view of the kitchen and everything that's happening in there. Now this video is going to feature all sorts of Korean food, so traditional street food and contemporary Korean food. And Gochu has a contemporary Korean menu. We've eaten here before, the food is delicious, the flavours are banging, and the food is yeah. super playful. So. We're looking at the menu and ordering up a feast. Two of the corn dogs, please. Uh, one milk bun. Before we start eating, I've been lucky enough to be allowed to jump into the kitchen. So I'm in here watching all the action taking place, getting totally in the way, but having a great time doing it because seeing this food come out of this very high standard kitchen is amazing. I love being in kitchens like this and watching the efficiency they manage to push food through with just everyone works in this seamless method without talking. It's amazing being right in here with the camera, getting some really cool shots of our incredible looking food being prepared. have arrived and I'm so excited to get into these. Let me show you what we've ordered. So this here are fresh oysters, so Kaipra oysters. Kaipra is a harbour north of Auckland. They're served with uh, leek oil, kimchi juice and pickle. Then we've got some fresh cucumber. So it's been slathered with cashew cream, which is that beige colour there. And then on top of that, that orange sauce, that sam sauce, so samjang, is a fermented soybean mixed with gochujang, which is a Korean red pepper chilli paste. And then this one here, I'm really excited to get into. So this is venison tartare. So raw venison, and it's been mixed with Asian pear. There's some salted uh, cured I think it's just cured egg yolk over the top and then these crispy things here are kumara crisps. So kumara is sweet potato. I'm just going to dive right in and smash one of these oysters. Alright, get my little fork in case I need to dislodge the little sucker. That's good. The oyster is very creamy. The pickled radish is slightly sweet and tangy, and then that kimchi juice. 
Wow. It has a um, like an acidity to it. It's uh, obviously the juice that's from the pickled radish. Oh, that's good. Wow. Perfect start. Now I'm really excited about this. So this venison tartare dish. I remember eating a dish in Seoul at a market called Guangzhang Market, which is a popular food market in the city. You can go to this restaurant and eat a dish called Yuk Kue, which is steak tartare, and they serve it with matchstick pears and octopus and egg yolk. And so this is sort of Jason Kim, and Jason Kim is the executive chef. He's the one over there prepping up the, the meals. This is his version of your kueh. So it's a venison tartar, it's got the Asian pears, but it's also got that awesome kiwi element to it. So the crispy kumra chips on the top. So the kumra is the sweet potato. The pear is sweet. The venison melts in your mouth. They've used Korean soy sauce in that as well, so there's a saltiness to it. We've got the crunch from the kumara chips. That's insane. has arrived so we've got three dishes the first is the black pudding corn dog so on the inside black pudding on the outside is a cornmeal batter and then it's been dipped in panko crumbs and you dip the the little hot dog in a leek mayonnaise this smells so good so this is the gochu cordon bleu so it's stuffed full of pork mince raclette cheese and then that dark sauce on the outside is a spicy Worcestershire sauce then you've got some uh, shaved cabbage over the top and then finally their famous milk bun so this is a bit of a favorite on the menu stuffed full of spicy pork and kimchi and then you dip the the pork bun in this burr block which is a butter sauce I'm going to go for a corn dog first with this leek mayonnaise. Look at the beautiful golden corn dog. Oh, look at that mayonnaise. Beautiful. So this is a black pudding corn dog. So the sundae basically, which you get in Korea. So little black pudding sausages. Wow. Wow. Mm. Mm. That is very good. That leek mayonnaise is very strong, so it's got a fresh burst from the leek mayonnaise. And then the black pudding is not too strong, which is very nice. You still get a black pudding hit, and the, the batter is nice and thick, so you get real crunch, softness from where the batter's been cooked, and then a beautiful creaminess from the black pudding or the sundae in there. Let's get some more of that mayo on there. And so the, the sundae or the black pudding is a blood sausage, so it'll be a pig's blood sausage. But sundae, so the Korean version, has glass noodles running through it as well. Oh, good. Very good. Mm. I'm so intrigued by this gochu cordon bleu. So it's been deep fried, this, ho this whole parcel of mince and raclette cheese. So it's going to be saucy inside and then it's just coated in this Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce glaze and then you've got that uh, cabbage over the top so I'm just going to cut this bad boy in half so we can have a look at the cross section. Ooh, oh my gosh, you can already see the cheese oozing out. Ooh, look at that, so stuff full of that cheese, wow, okay. Check out this cheese ooze. Mm. Mm. Oozy cheese, really flavoursome pork. It's perfectly seasoned. And then that crunch from the cabbage, it tastes like junk food, but in the best possible way. That's so good. Time to get into this milk bun, so it's very 
squishy, this thing. So I reckon rip and dip. So let's see what's on, on what's on the inside. Whoa, look at that. So stuffed full of pork and kimchi. Oh, you can really smell the sweet caramelized onions and garlic in there. Okay, so it comes with this beurre blanc sauce. So beurre blanc is a butter sauce. Let's just dip, look at that. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh wow what I love about the flavors here are that they sort of punch you around the face super strong bold robust flavors so that beurre blanc a real hit of butter and then this milk bun the, the bread is so soft And then that filling, the pork is very tender and then you've got this spicy kick from the kimchi. Unreal. See what I mean by best seat in the house? So Jason Kim, executive chef of Gochu, is making us bingsu. Now bingsu is a famous Korean dessert. Thomas and I have eaten many a bingsu in Seoul. And so it starts with um, this block of shaved ice. And this block of ice is actually uh, rice milk ice. So that forms the basis of this dessert. And they've got this awesome ice gr uh, grinder or shaver and it shaves these really fine uh, ice flakes. Look at it go. We've got this beautiful bowl of flavored snow essentially. It's so delicate. And then uh, Jason said there are some goodies hiding underneath. So let's see, whoa, what have we got? Oh, we've got black sesame custard and then also some rice cakes. Mm. The rice milk flakes just explode in a puff in your mouth. Those chewy rice cakes and then that black sesame custard. Custard anything I'm addicted to. So that is great. There's also I think some like crispy rice puffs or something in there as well. Oh man, we are going to demolish this. We've headed up through the city on foot and this next place shows some of the diversity of Korean food here in Auckland. So we've just had that very modern take on Korean with some Kiwi twists. Now we're going for street food. So this is street food exactly like you'll find on the streets of Seoul. It's a little stand right here on the street corner. It's really neat to have a sort of street food style stand right here in the heart of Auckland because New Zealand doesn't really have a street food culture. So this is super exciting. And this stall here specializes in one of my favorite Korean street foods and that is hot dog, which is a Korean style filled pancake. So they've got a full menu here with savory and sweet options. I've gone for sweet, cinnamon and sugar hot dog. Yeah, we can't wait to get into it. <laughs> look at this beautiful golden hot dog. This thing looks amazing. And I love that there's this little street food stall. And it feels like you're in Korea because we have these a lot when we're in Korea. They're sort of a thing that you can't resist. You walk down the street, you see a little stand, you go, oh, hot dog. And you've just got to have one as a, as a snack. Often in Korea, they're sometimes a little bit smaller than this. This one is ginormous you can get sweet and savory like Sheena said we've gone for sweet that's the classic one that we love as a sort of a snack during the day so it's a, a wheat flour batter which is very sticky they take that batter they stuff it with whatever you have chosen to have and then it goes on the hot plate and on the hot plate they have the, an implement that squishes it down so it sits on top of it squishes it down and makes it this beautiful uniform golden color oh Oh my god. Mmm. 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 
oh, so stuffed with sugar, cinnamon, and some crushed peanuts. And that is so good. It's beautifully sweet, but not too sweet. And the um, cinnamon is strong. There's a lot of it. Mmm. Mmm. This is top notch. Beautiful little crunch on the outside. Almost a, a phyllo pastry type crunch. So there's a little bit of oil on that hot plate and it's just got this little crispy cracking crunch on the outside and then a much more softer center with that sugar, cinnamon and peanut filling. That takes me right back to being in Korea. That is an awesome hot dog. And I just love it. Look at this cool little stand. Like it's just a little window on the side of the road. So it's a little walk past, grab a snack. They've got a cool menu. Oh, that is a great piece of Korean street food here in Auckland. We annihilated that hot dog. Man, it was good. We had a great time chatting to the family that run that stall. They've been operating for over 10 years. Dad's from Seoul, Mum's from Busan, and man, they may make a mean hot dog. Now we're heading across town to our next spot. We're going to a traditional Korean restaurant for gamja tang, which is pork backbone stew. We have made our way over to the north shore of Auckland and there's a little bit of a Korea town going on here and we're here for this restaurant to have gamja tan which is pork spine soup and I am so excited for this. Let's go get some pork spine soup. This giant pot of ganja tang, which is the pork spine soup or stew, and it is bubbling away at the table on a gas burner. I am in love with Korean stews and soups. They're just like a warm hug. They're so comforting and satisfying. So let me sort of talk you through what this one is made up of. So on the top here we've got some chili, the green is the per is perilla leaves or sesame leaves, then we've got some spring onions and then like the brown stuff are uh, crushed sesame seeds and then underneath we have the pork spine so lots and lots of well, there we go, here's a bit that I can show you. So, pork spine. So, a lot of bones, obviously, with a bit of meat clinging onto it. There's also some potatoes and I think some cabbage in there. And this fiery looking soup, look at that, so fiery and red, uh, is a pork broth uh, soup. And it's flavoured with things like garlic and gochugaru, which is uh, Korean chilli flakes, and gochujang, which is uh, chilli paste. And then to go with our stew, we've got a bowl of rice each. And then, of course, because it's a Korean meal, banchan, which is side dishes. So all sorts of things. We've got kimchi, mung bean sprouts, to some bean curd skin. Ooh, I can't wait to get in. I've loaded up my bowl with some of the soup. And I just want a taste of this fiery broth. Ooh. Oh, it looks fiery and it tastes fiery, so it's quite spicy. And that's because of the chili flakes and the gochujang, which is that chili paste. But man, it's got a ton of flavor. You can really taste the sesame seeds. I love grabbing a bite of rice and just dunking it in that soup. Holy moly, that is good. It's comfort food, so it's hearty, it's satisfying, it's warming. Now I've got a big piece of pork here. So lots of bones obviously, but a ton of meat still. It's tender as anything. It just melts in your mouth. And those pork bones have been simmering away for hours and hours. It just falls apart. Oh man, this is tasty. A ton of vegetables in there as well. The perilla leaves add a real uh, aniseed type kick. And then tons of cabbage and some other greens in there. Oh, this is good. I'm gonna break up 
a piece of this potato which sort of sopped up all of that soup. We'll get some rice as well. Mmm. Oh man. Oh. Wow, that is good. Oh, it looks so fiery and spicy with, you know, chili, but it's not crazy burning. It's, it's got a beautiful heat to it, but it doesn't destroy your mouth. And that potato has just drunk all that soup. So it is flavor right through the potato. Oh, this is so good. Auckland has some amazing Korean food. We've covered some cool ones in this video. We hope you've enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe. Drop a comment down below. Let us know what you thought of the video. Thanks for watching.